Well, good morning, church. Thank you for your prayers in this time that me and my family are going through. A few hours from now, I'll be in Plainfield where I'll be saying goodbye to my brother. But old this one. But church, there is power in prayer. The power of prayer. Samuel, the man of prayer. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. 1 Samuel 12, 23. Samuel, church, Samuel, church, stands out as one of the Old Testament men who had great influence with God through prayer. God could not deny him anything he asked for. Samuel's prayer always affected God and moved God to what uh, would not have otherwise been done had he not prayed. Samuel stands out as a striking illustration of the possibilities of prayer, church. Prayer was no strange exercise to Samuel. Go through him and his prayer. God's cause was brought out of his low, depressed condition. A great national rival began, of which David was one of his fruits. God, thank you that you use ordinary people, equip them, and guide them to do great things for your glory. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get high technical. Church. Church, my texts come from Revelations chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. And Revelations chapter 2 verse 7. When Jesus brings the message, often the preacher takes some abuse for the sermons he preaches. Yet, if he is listening to the Lord, he is in reality only the mailman. When the sermon is based, is when a sermon is Bible based and the preacher is split a spirit filled then the Lord is responsible for the sermon and for its contents with that in mind consider what it would be like if the Lord himself came here to preach this evening and many folks have the impression that Jesus was some sort of soft spoken mild mannered wimp of a preacher but I believe that this, that Jesus was willing to preach the truth and expose evil among his people. Regardless of what people think, everything is not okay when, with the Lord. Sometimes sin must be rebuked and evil dealt with. So, church, what would it be like if the Lord came here this evening, looked around and began to preach this to this church. In the book of Revelation, there are seven churches mentioned. Jesus took the time to speak to all of them 
only to the persecuted church, the Philadelphia, the evangelistic church did not receive a complaint from Jesus. Five churches were rebuked for their failures. It might be today that some of the traits that caused Jesus to rebuke these churches might be found here at Galilee. If that is the case, then we must deal with those flaws. Uh, how would Jesus preach to us if he came here today? Would all be in order? Or would the Lord find things to speak against? This evening, let's listen in as Jesus brings a message. Let's, let's notice the five rebukes he, he levels at his people. The preacher, A, his identity, Jesus himself. Jesus is interested in the activities of the church. He watches all that goes on. He misses nothing, church. His indignation. The Lord is grieved by the sins of his people. They do not go unchallenged or unnoticed. His intentions. He wants his church to be able to fulfill his great commission. The problems. First, love, loss. First love, original, emotional, uh, emotional, motivational, all the trappings of Christianity, yet they cease to love Jesus first. All we do must be done out of boldless love for Jesus, or it is all worthless. Do not love him as you should. You do not love him as you should. Tolerate sin in the church. This church tolerates sin in its midst. They taught that it was all right to sin. After, after all, they were God's people. It is never right for the church to marry the world. But a distinction between the clergy and the literals. All God's people are priests. Those who tolerate sin are just as guilty as those who commit it. Tolerate false prophets. This church was probably founded by a woman, certainly confounded by a woman. Our women, she led God's people astray with false doctrine, false doctrine must be tolerated, must not be tolerated. Jezebelism, is prominent today. There's nothing wrong with old-fashioned Bible-based preaching. No reality. This church had a reputation for life, but there was no reality. They had no flame to back up their fame. The most important testimony that a church can bear is that its works are completed. They do not teach heaven doing the dabbling reputation is repetition is use, un, un, is, is useless unless there is reality behind it are we real do we work uh, do our works reach heaven this church had two problems first spiritual indifference second spiritual indifference uh, ignorance they had enough contact with the truth to know the heat, yet were different, were indifferent to it. Therefore, they were a mix of hot and cold and they made God sick. Many are here today. Jesus knows the truth, lost, cross, no concern, unable to move the Lord, the Lord misrepresented Jesus. The prescription. Jesus spoke to each uh, speech. Jesus spoke to each church and gave them the remedy to up to their problems. If we have looked at ourselves, church, come on now. Amen. And seen uh, a problem, there is 
a remedy for us also. Notice what he said to each church. Remedies. One, no love. Remember, repent, repent, or removal. Tolerating evil. Repent, turn, or face the wrath of Jesus. Tolerate false prophets. Stand firm on the truth. You'll never stand alone when you stand with the Lord. A lack of reality. They are to wake up the rival with that which is lacking. Lukewarmness. Recognize a dependency upon the Lord and repent of failure. But especially open the doors of both the hearts of the people and of the church itself and let him, huh, let him in so that he might be in first place. What do you need to do concerning your walk with the Lord? Jesus has the remedy that you need. Always remember that regardless of where you are right now, Jesus can put you where he wants you to be. The key word for all the churches is repent. If we come, if we come, he will cleanse. In my conclusion, if Jesus was standing before you tonight with his eyes like burning, a burning flame, how would you respond to this message? You may not see him, but he is here. He is, he is watching and he is waiting to see how Galilee uh, Baptist Church will be, will be used, uh, will use the things she has been given. Is, he is watching to see what kind of church we turn out to be. I challenge every person here look to look inward right now and ask yourself where do I stand before the Lord in service in attitude in evangelism in spirit growth in love for God and the brethren etc then come to him and make it right in Jesus name let the church let the church say them or say that word a and man a and man let him let the church say that word a and man god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you if this message has been a blessing to you find yourself a bible-based church and become part of the body of christ in jesus name let the church say amen 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 god bless you that's it. That's it.